just go for broke. Come on, open up your mouth like a trumpet and just begin to worship, 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 worship. He's a good God. He's a kind God. He's a merciful God. He's our Savior. He's our King. He's our, our friend. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's our refuge. He's our, our safe place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you're yet still standing, God, we thank you now for your presence that's in the room. God, we pray now. We pray now that we that we that you will open up our hearts, that we are receptive to what your word has to say. We just don't want to be hearers of your word, but we want to be doers of your word as well, God. Thank you for your strength that's made perfect in our moment of weaknesses. Thank you, Father God, for you having bringing us through this whole entire week through ups and downs, uncertainties, whatever it may have been. God, you brought us through. And we give no one the praise and the glory and the honor but you. And it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray and God's people said amen. 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 Come on and clap those hands one more time. Hallelujah. What a good God. What a good God we serve. What a good God we serve. Amen. Good morning to you, Hope World, those in person and those online. If you're watching online, just go ahead and share this tag, some other people in it, so they can be a part of the Hope World experience. Amen. We are so grateful, so thankful for everyone that is here today to see your smiling face. Amen. Pastor, how you know I'm smiling? I got my, I got my mask on. I saw your eyebrows go up. Praise God. Amen. I hope this, I hope spiritual discernment has shifted now. We we now we know how to discern eyebrows now praise God amen when folks are looking back at us and smiling we're so glad to have you here with us today I'm so glad that our church mother some of our church mothers are in the house mother Simon mother Albert help me praise God for them amen pastor why are you always acknowledging our church mothers you never say nothing about nobody else I give honor to whom honor is due I thank God for these women amen that stand in the gap amen and not just look cute amen but they're praying and interceding on our behalf and mother Albert has been a member of Hopewell from birth from the womb on out she's been here but nowhere else but at the well so she is part of our foundation she has seen every turn every evolution of hope wealth and we thank God for her we thank God for uh, Mr. Bob Wills and his wife Ellen Wills being with us this morning amen Mr. Wills is a native of the Dale and he's also the new executive director of the Irma C. Hayes Center amen so we thank God for him and the work he hit the ground running so we thank God for him um, for him being here on today and to everybody amen just look over at somebody and just give them a Wakanda a wave or something a hug or something just let them know just smile and look at them praise God I know it's different it won't be like this always but we're making adjustments and doing what we got to do grab your Bibles and go with me to the gospel of Mark chapter 6 the gospel of Mark chapter 6 just two verses, verses 31 and 32. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 31 and 32. Amen. When you have it, just stand. Amen. This is not Simon says. I know, I know. You just sat down. But just stand if you're able to stand for the reading and the reverence of God's word. Mark chapter 6, verse 31 and 32. When you have it, just say amen. Amen. If you don't just say, wait on me, Pastor. If you're watching, you ain't got it yet. Just say, Reverend, wait on me. Give me a few more seconds. I'm almost there. Mark chapter 6, verse 31 and 32. We thank God for our music ministry. Amen. For leading us into the presence of the Lord. Our media ministry, ushers, parking lot team. We thank God for all of those to help make the Hope World experience what it is. Mark 6. 31 and 32 from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It reads as this. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't even get a chance to eat. They were so busy that they forgot to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. So they left for a boat by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. I want to preach this morning from the title, Normalizing Rest. Normalizing Rest. Normalizing Rest. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Normalizing Rest. For many of us over this past year, almost year and a half, we have been anticipating, we have been anticipating for that moment to come where our governor would be able to announce that we were at 
phase five. We anticipated and waited. Some of us, some of us did not, but some of us anticipated for that day to come so that we there could be a shift to us getting back to some sense of normalcy or making the necessary adjustments for this new world. I'm um, Sierra that we're living in today. Last Friday, we got that wish a few Fridays ago, June 11, our governor made the announcement that Illinois, according to the Restore Illinois plans, had, had, had officially entered into phase five where you could be able to go and vacation to certain places. You could be able to go and be a part and take advantage of certain attractions in the state of Illinois. The certain capacity limits had already been lifted, causing us, Mr. Wills, to be able to get back to some sense of normalcy. Some people now that kind of mad about it are returning back in person to work. They've gotten used to being at home and being half dressed for the work they have on a shirt and tie and their Mickey Mouse pajamas underneath as they went around as they went about their work day. But now they're having to shift to going back into the building. Many churches now are opening back up and people are able to be able to tune in virtually or to be in person. person. Shameless plug come July 11. Um, you won't have to register for service anymore to be in person at the well. So you can just show up with your mask and your hand sanitizer and be a part of the Hopewell experience. Oh, what a time is going to be where we are all together to be able to magnify and glorify the name of Jesus. So many things are changing now and making that attempt to be able to to go back and create some sense of new normalcy for our lives. We may never be the same again. It's okay. I'm learning that we don't have to make any excuses. All we need to do is just make the necessary adjustments to do what we need to do. As we're making our way back and creating this new normal and going about and kind of picking up our pace now and doing things at the same speed that we were doing them about a year ago, let us not forget around March, around March of 2020 when we just when we just experienced a certain interruption in our lives and everything came to a screeching halt. Everything stopped. Restaurants were closed. <laughs> Stores were closed. Barbershops were closed. Nail salons were closed. Everything was closed except for Kroger and Walmart, praise God. They were still open because they were considered essential. We had to have food. We had to have gas. We needed essential things in our life. But in that new adjustment, it caused us to change our entire pace where we slow down. And, and, and if we be honest and true, that after a certain time frame, maybe around May, we began to get a little adjusted to it and comfortable with it. And we began to realize, Dr. Lane, how tired we really were. As our pace began, began to change, Candace, we began to realize that the more that we slowed down, EJ, we began to realize, man, there was so many things that I was doing, so many committees I was a part of, so many meetings I was going to, so many errands that I was running. When everything came to a screeching halt, it caused us to be able to step back and to realize what was essential and what was it. It helped us to realize for some of us that we have been running on empty and didn't even know it. We have been running on a reserve tank of energy um, that we didn't even realize that we had exhausted all of our energy. But now we was about to we, now we was about to exhaust our reserve. As we're getting ready to make our way back, as we have been transitioning back, some have went on vacation, praise God, I'm one of them. Some of us have been kind of moving around, being around family and friends. Oh my gosh, I forgot where I was at just a few weeks ago. Last weekend, Juneteenth, down in Addicts Park, a great event that was sponsored here in our city. There were some pastors I had not seen since the pandemic, since everything had begun. We had not seen each other. We had not fellowship with each other. It was almost like, almost like a big old friendly reunion. We're glad to see each other. We we missed the times of fellowship. I know you're not about to ask for this, but I'm going to go ahead and put it out there anyway. I know I get it, I get it, I get it, that now church has changed, and now we have the option to be able to watch online and maybe never enter into the sanctuary again. Some have been excited about it. Some have been bothered by that. But let me just help us out real quick. There is something special that happens 
When we come together in the house of God, I know, I know, I know, I know we are the church and church happens outside the four walls of the building. I get it. I understand. But pastor, you've been telling us about small group pastor. You've been preaching about uh, uh, spending time with each other outside of church. But there is yet still something happens when we come together with one mind and one voice to be able to lift up the name of Jesus that sometimes cannot be replicated online. Fellowship. We had a church meeting last Saturday. Meeting was uh, literally 50 minutes, 54 minutes to be exact. But once the meeting was over, people was just scattered around with their mask on and sanitized and vaccinated themselves and was just greeting each other, elbowing one another because it had been so long since they had seen one another. Let me just help us out real quick, y'all. Please, please don't neglect the value and the importance of fellowship. Don't, 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 don't neglect the value and the importance of us being able to come together. It may look differently now, but we make the necessary adjustments. But let us not forsake assembling ourselves together because God does something when we all come together. Yes, he can do something with you in your bathroom. Yes, he can do something with you as you're making coffee. Some, some of you that's watching online right now as you're doing other things and tuning in to service but something happens mother simon when we come through the wall come through the doors of 400 east main street and enter into this place this sacred space that has been created for us to lift up the name of jesus together something happens when we come together now Pastor, okay, okay, okay. I hear what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But get back to your text, sir. Get back on track um, so that we can be able to get out of here. I got a pot roast in the crock pot right now. I'm trying to do some other things right now during the day, Pastor. So come on and get with your message and say what you're going to say and go ahead and sit down with your bald head itself um, so that we can make on with the rest of our day. I hear you. I'm moving just as fast um, as I can. Here it is, saints of God. As we are shifting back and, and, and adapting to this new normal, let us not, let us not go back and pick up the same pace that we realized exhausted us back in 2020. Let us not be tempted, Sister Cherie, to return back to the very things <laughs> new, new, and sometimes even people that were zapping all of our energies. Here it is. You've heard me say this before, and I will say it again. Your emotional, mental, and physical health is your responsibility. Your emotional, your mental, and your physical health is your responsibility. If you are waiting for someone to make your mental, emotional, and physical health a priority in your life, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. You're going to have to make up in your mind, Mother Albert, and say to myself, okay, hey, I need to make some time for me. I'm getting tired. My pace is slowing down. I need to make some changes and adjustments in my life so that I can be able to get the rest that I so rightfully need in my life. What does that mean, Pastor, when you say your emotional, mental, and physical health me? That means, okay, I'm going to pick a little bit, but I'm going to include myself in it. That means that even with our physical health, hey, 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 every weekend, every weekend, I'm talking to myself, does not mean just because it's Friday, you got to have Harold's chicken, a six-piece fried hard, extra mild sauce on the side. It doesn't mean I'm preaching to myself that every morning it almost seems like, Mr. Will, that my car is being led by the Spirit of God for me to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a large hot coffee, seven creams, four sugars, and a glazed donut. That it means that if my physical health is, is, my, is my responsibility, then I'm going to have to make some adjustments to make sure that I can be able to eat what I want to eat, but to have some boundaries and to exercise some self-control. Oh, Pastor, I was ready for you to preach about me being delivered and me getting my blessing, but you getting your blessing will mean absolutely nothing if your health can't keep up with the blessing that God has for your life. 
my mental and my emotional health. That means, yes, I take everything to God in prayer, but it also means that there's nothing wrong with me if, it, 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 if it's needed for me to meet with a counselor to help me walk through some things and help me to be able to take care of some things that's going on in my life emotionally and mentally. My mental, your mental, our mental and emotional and physical health has to be a priority in our lives that we're not putting that responsibi responsibility, Brother Victor, into the hands of anybody else, but we're taking control of those things and we're doing what is necessary for us to be able to be as healthy as possible, Candace, in every area of our life with our emotional and mental health. That may mean that I may have to sit down with some close family and friends and explain to them if I distant myself from you it's not because I'm acting funny I just began to realize that you zap a lot of my energy and that interacting with you on a consistent basis may not be real good for my mental and emotional health I love you it ain't nothing you can do about it but I might need a little space from you for a little bit Waiting for someone to make that a priority in our lives. We're going to be waiting for a very long time. Look at the scripture this morning, Mark chapter 6, verse 31. I love it. Ministry is going forth. Jesus discerns, and he realized that his disciples are tired, and they need rest. I love it. Jesus sees what they don't see. Jesus discerns what they don't discern. He extends to them a personal invitation to steal away so that they could be able to get the necessary rest that they need. Look at the personal invite that Jesus is for of. It's four things. He says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place to do what? To rest. He tells them, I want you to come with me by yourselves, we're going to go to an isolated place so that you can be able to rest. Can I tell you that the invitation this morning has not just been extended to the disciples, but it has been extended to you and I as well. Jesus is saying to us today, June the 27, 2021, come with me by yourself to a quiet place so that you can be able to rest. I love it because Jesus, he's letting them, he's letting them to be able to know and he's letting us know too, Sister Tanya, that I want you to be able to come with me because when I have you by yourself in a quiet place to be able to rest, I can do in you and empower you and infuse you more than any other source can. I like what Jesus is doing because he's letting them know and you coming away with me, I'm letting you know that I'm the source and I will, I will refresh you and rejuvenate you and give you everything Everything that has tapped out your energy. But I got to be willing to accept the invitation. I got to be willing to come with them by myself to a quiet place so that I can be able to rest. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you what we really need? Saints, we really just need to rest. Oh, man, we need to still away with Jesus. We need, to, we need to leave all our cares and worries behind. We need, to, we need to go to a quiet place just to be able to rest our souls. We, we need to be able to get away just for a little bit, just to have a little talk with Jesus, to have a few moments with Jesus so that he can be able to rejuvenate us and refresh us. We need to be able to get to a place where we can be able to still away with him so that he can do in us what no other, what no other source or person or thing can can do let me say this us going constantly for God doesn't make us more saved or more spiritual us going and doing oh I gotta do this oh I gotta do that oh I gotta be a part of this that does not make you more spiritual in fact you will wear yourself out that you will become more involved in ministry and less less desiring to spend time with him but your focus become more on doing for him rather than being with him 
All right, let me pick up my page. Y'all starting to get bored with me this morning. Here it is. If we're going to normalize rest, I just got one thing for you this morning. If we're going to normalize rest, that means that we're going to have to change our pace, change our pace. We're going to have to change our speed. We're going to have to change our pace. We're going to have to realize now and take the time to be able to sit down and evaluate and ask ourselves some tough questions and say, what's essential for my life right now? What is it that I need to do versus what I want to do versus what others want me to do? What are the necessary essentials in my life right now so that I can be able to find the right pace, Minister Lynn, so that I can be able to do the necessary things that I need to do? Because sometimes, 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 saints of God, the biggest thing that you and I can be able to say to help us to be able to normalize rest in our lives is for us to learn a two-letter word called no. To be able to say no so that we're not overtaxing ourselves and doing things that somebody else can do. Or it very well may be something that we can do. But right now in this moment and in this season in my life, I can't give my time and my energy to that. I have to change my pace. I got to change my pace. I got to change my pace. I have to change my pace. I got to change. I have to change my pace. I have to change my pace. I have to change my rhythm. I have to change my balance. I have to reassess my life to see once again what is essential and what's not. Because if everything is essential, something is not essential. If everything is a priority, then something is not going to be able to reach its maximum potential. If everything is important in our, in our lives, if everything's we have, everything we have to have our hands on, there are some things that we are not going to be able to accomplish and do. So i got to change my pace. What does that look for you like now? Oh, man, this question would have been hard if we had not been on time out for almost a year, for over a year. But now that we've experienced a refreshing time out, now I have to ask myself the question before I get back in and get busy like I was before. No, 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 no. What is my current pace like now? What does that look like now? Before I say yes to a meeting, do I go ahead and just ask, ask the question real quick? Will this meeting be, will the option be for Zoom? Because if Zoom is an option, I'm going to be at the meeting. If Zoom's not an option, I may not be there, praise God. <laughs> asking ourselves a question and reassessing our lives and asking, do I have, and am I the same person I was a year and a half ago almost? What has been on time now, what, 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 what has been on time now changed within me that what I used to do, I can't go back to doing again. Normalizing rest means that we're going to have to change our pace. When Jesus recognized, I loved it, Jesus recognized that the disciples were, were, were tired and had been exhausted, but they didn't even see it. Let me go a step further and say Jesus recognized that you and I may be tired in some areas in our lives, and we don't even realize it yet. And he's extended an invitation by saying, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place so that you can be able to rest. Can I tell you what Jesus is needing from us in this hour? He is not just needing some busy workers to be busy in the kingdom of God. Absolutely. But absolutely we need that we need active hands and feet to be able to do ministry. But he's looking for well rested hands and feet that can be active and participate in ministry. But if you know nosy in some instances when it comes to reading the word of God, you realize there's a problem that presents itself. Pastor, now, I done read ahead of you, and you talking about normalizing rest and come away with Jesus by yourself to be able to go to a quiet place to be able to rest. But, Reverend, I kept reading along the text, and verse 33 said that many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and saw them leaving, and people from many towns read up ahead of them to the shore and got up ahead of them, and Jesus saw the large crowd, and he was, and he had compassion upon them like they were sheep without a shepherd, and he began trying to figure out 
how he could be able to take care of these people that had needs. You all know this is a story. When Jesus feed the 5,000 with the two fish and five loaves of bread. Now, wait a minute, Reverend. You said you're talking about normalizing rest, but these disciples did not get the rest that they needed right away because Jesus said, hey, I need you all to help me to do ministry for these people who are lost without who are lost without a shepherd just when Jesus promises them rest somebody called the church office and said we need we need Jesus and the disciples to come and do a miracle and they put it on their calendar and now Jesus is having to tell the disciples hey I need you all to help me to do ministry disciples looked at them and said wait a minute Jesus you just told us to come with you by ourselves to a quiet place to be able to rest. But now you're telling us out in the middle of a remote area where there are no resources, no Kroger's, no Snooks, no Walmart, nothing to go and bring these people full. 5,000 people, not even including the women and children. Jesus tells them, you feed them. Jesus, you just told me I had I, I could use my PTO time right now and take a break and have a much needed vacation. And now you're telling me to feed them 5,000 people in a remote area with nothing? What do you do when you don't get the rest that you need? What do you do? When you got all these great plans and, and, and all these great things to help you to help refresh yourself and be in a place to be able to be able to be able to get the much needed rest that you need, what do you do when that happens? Let's be honest this morning. It seems like it seems like every time, Aunt Sandra, I've checked my list off. I did the little things that I need to do. I said, hey, I'm just going to sit down in the chair just for a few moments. I'm a kid back. Hey, I'm going to put on Chicago PD. I'm going to get caught up with Chicago PD because maybe this is an episode where Voice going to slap somebody. If you've never watched Chicago PD and seen Voice slap somebody, you need to watch it because he has a slap. I mean, he perks up his lips and he slaps them out of nowhere and it shifts their entire life. You have to see it because he does it with such an art. And every time Mother Simon, Mother Aubrey, I make up in my mind, Mr. Wills, that that's what I'm going to do. As soon as I sit down, one of those little women of God going to say, Daddy, I need. You didn't think about asking me nothing when I was up. But as soon as I sat down, now you have a need. Kenny would sit there in her chair with the blanket right there next to her and say, Daddy, can you come and cover me up? Little woman of God, if you don't pick up your hands and pick up that blanket and wrap yourself up in that blanket, you didn't think about asking me anything. Until I sat down. Doesn't that seem like how life is? When you make up in your mind that you're going to rush, you make up in your mind you're going to go on vacation, you make up in your mind you're going to take a nap, and as soon as you do that, something comes that interrupts what you plan to do. What do you do when you don't get the rest that you need? Jesus shows us right here with the disciples that when you do, when you don't get the rest that you need, you have to learn how to rely upon his power. You have to learn how to rely upon his strength. You have to learn how to lean and depend upon Jesus. When you're not getting the rest that you need, you have to learn how to lean and depend upon him to give you what you need to be able to do what you need to do rest is still your portion he still wants you to have the rest that you need but sometimes life being life gets interrupted Disciples at this moment, Dr. Lane, they have no choice but to rely upon his instructions and to rely upon his strength and to rely upon his power. And the same way the disciples did that to be able to execute and to do what Jesus called them to do is the same, th the, the same thing that you and I are going to have to do as we navigate through this thing called life. Father, you know what's before me. You said in your word that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. You said in your word that the Holy Spirit will come alongside of me and help me and empower me to do what I cannot do on my own. 
So, Father, I'm leaning on you right now. You know I'm exhausted. You know that I'm tired. But, God, I need you to rise up in me, Father God, to do what I need to do, Father God. I need you to strengthen me, Father God. I need you to give me the words. I need you to give me the energy. I need you to give me, I need your power to be fully manifested in my life so that I can be able to get the, the so that I can be able to accomplish the task at hand. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sure somebody can be able to testify with me this morning that when you have been exhausted above beyond being exhausted and had no idea how you were going to make it through the work week, how you were going to go to work and do all the necessary things that needed to be done at home and in your life. And you look back at the end of the week, you look back at the earlier part of the week and you say, God, it was nobody but you that helped me to accomplish the tax at home. There was nobody but you, God, that brought me through the work week. It was nobody but you, God, that helped me with the schoolwork. I I should have failed that test, but God, you brought everything back to my remembrance so that I can be able to make it through. I can't give nobody the credit but you because it was your power that, that was made perfect in my moment of weakness. People get fed. They get fed in such a way, Brother Victor, that they had some leftovers. Oh, God, don't let me go there. Everybody walked away with a basket of food. I like it because if we get down, jump down to verse 45. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back in the boat and head across to Bethsaida while he went while he sent the people home, after telling everybody goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Finally, after being promised a vacation, being in interrupted by ministry opportunities, they finally get the rest that they need. And I love the latter part of verse 45. Jesus sent the disciples away the rest. But he himself accepted an invitation from his father to go to him by himself to a quiet place so that he could be able to pray and be able to rest. Could it be? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Pray, sing, sing, and speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Could it be the Holy Spirit is speaking and we're not able to hear? Because we're so exhausted? Could it be Holy Spirit is speaking and talking to us, but we don't hear him? Because we're just tapped out and tired? Jesus himself knew we didn't did great ministry. But now I have to create a time to sit down and to be able to rest. I like, I like, I like, I like what Pastor John Faison says. He says, rest is not a reward, it's a requirement. All of us are guilty of making rest a reward rather than rest being a requirement. Ooh, when I get this task done, I, I, I owe it to myself to get a nap. Oh, I done worked hard all week. When I get home, I deserve. No, 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 no. It is not a reward for being a good boy or being a good, bo bo a good girl. It is a requirement that you and I need in our life to be able to have intentional moments to rest. Why? Because once again, no one is going to make that a priority for you but you. And if you're waiting on someone else to make it a priority, keep on waiting until Jesus come back. If you don't say, I need to pause, if you don't say, I need a break, if you don't say, if you don't communicate what you need, nothing's going to change. 
So, Pastor, as I'm wrapping it up, how do I apply this to my life? How do I make sense of all this stuff in creating this whole thing about normalizing rest? How do I make this a part of my life? Here it is. We have to be intentional by creating a strategic rest plan. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we do. I shared this a few weeks ago, maybe even some months ago, on the Fresh Start Monday morning prayer call. I saw something. I screenshot it, and I love what Kimberly Rainey said. She said, that there are nine types of rest that you and I need. First one, she said, time away. Oh, God. Yes, you do. Second one, permission to not be helpful. Oh, my goodness. We don't have to be everybody's savior. We only have one of those, and he paid the cost already. He paid it in full. We don't have to be the rescue mama, the rescue daddy. We don't have to be the savior grandma, the savior granddaddy. We don't have to be the savior family member that every time there's a problem in somebody's life, we put our capes on and we run to their rescue to help save them out of what they're in. Sometimes we need to give ourselves permission not to be helpful. to come to you with something. Oh, are you for real? What? How? When? Why did they do that? What was they thinking? Now, I can't help in this. So I'm going to pray, though. I'm about to go to their prayer cards, and I'm about to put one up in heaven for them, but I can't give no money. I can't give no time. I'm going to pray that God going to intervene and help them. God bless you, and, 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 and be safe. Giving yourself permission not to be helpful. There has to be a time and a moment in our life that we institute these things to help us have a balance in our life. Because here it is, here it is, here it is. People will exhaust you until there is no more. And then they will find somebody else to exhaust and will fall out at your funeral. Uh, I know I'm talking good this morning. I'm going to keep it moving, though. Permission not to be helpful. Number three, do something that's unproductive. I know that sounds like a bad use of time, but just sometimes to be able to have a mental escape in doing something that nothing's going to come out of it is just something to be able to do. I know that don't make sense. I know it don't. I know it don't. But it's helpful just to have something to mentally escape. You know, and just sit down and put YouTube on and put in classic R&B and just escape in the music. Sit there and just do a crossword puzzle and just escape in the words. Do something. Sit on the porch and just look at people ride by and just wave at them as they go. <laughs> something unproductive. Now, you got to make sure you make a habit out of that, praise the Lord, but that's another message for another day. Here it is, connection to nature. Man, man, go on on a walk, go on on a walk, go on on a little trail and just walking and being captivated by the nature of God trees and the wind and how when the wind blows certain leaves not all the leaves all the time but certain leaves will fall off the tree and just recognize it and realize it that the leaves could not fall off the tree if the creator of the universe had not gave them permission to fall off the tree solitude to recharge a place of silence just to be able to recharge. A place of silence where God can speak and you can hear him clearly. Number six, a break. Number six, a break from responsibility. Oh, God, pastor, what does that look like? You got to get creative and make it happen. Having a break from responsibility where I'm allowing myself a day, I'm allowing myself a weekend where I do nothing. Oh, pastor, but I got laundry. Okay, 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 okay. It's fine. It, give, it can sit there for another day or two. It'll be okay. It's going to be fine. Nobody's going to come and, and, and write you up because you're, you got laundry spilling over. No, 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 no. No one's going to say anything to you if they don't know what's going on. Giving yourself, to giving yourself permission to, to have a break from responsibility. Number seven, stillness to decompress. 
Oh, man, when you have that place of solitude where you go and it's silence, you will begin to realize how stressed you really are. How worked up because you're, you're so used to going and going and going and doing that we don't know how to relax. I know people say, well, I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep on doing. I'm going to keep on marching. I can sleep when I'm dead. No, no. Before I get eternal rest, I'm going to get some earthly rest on this side. And I'm going to do whatever it is that I need to do to make sure that I get the rest that I need. Yes, I'm going to go. Yes, I'm going to do for Jesus. But that does not mean I have to be exhausted and tapped out in working for the master. Number eight, safe place. Safe place just to be myself. Safe place just to be able to talk and to share things that's really on my mind, whether it be friends, whether it be a therapist, whether it be a counselor, just a safe place where I can be authentically me and don't have to fear somebody judging me. And then number nine, a long time at home. A long time at home. Don't, don't you know? Don't you know, Pastor? Oh, I want to go. I want to go here. I want to go there. I'm just not comfortable with flying yet. Don't you know that you can make where you want to go possible in your home? You can turn your phone off. If you want to go to Hawaii, get you some Hawaii things, things to put around the house, turn that phone off, and there you go. Have a luau all by yourself. You can create it right where you are. Time by yourself at home. I had a meeting yesterday that went longer than what they had told me. Brittany and the girls were away at a birthday party. I said, man, I started, I started doing the math. I started adding up them numbers. I said, I, about, I got about a good hour, hour and a half by myself at home. Boy, that meeting was wrapping up. I'm putting stuff in my briefcase. I'm just putting up. I'm putting up. I'm, I'm putting up, Deacon. I'm putting up. They said it was time to go. I ran out that door, jumped in that car. I ran to the house, got in the house, turned the alarm on, put my pajamas on, and I jumped in that bed <laughs> and was asleep. I was so knocked out they came home. I didn't know they was there. Took advantage of the time just to be home alone. Because I ain't nobody asked me for nothing. I ain't got to do nothing but just sleep. Sometimes the greatest gift we can give ourselves is rest. Is rest. Is rest. Is rest. You need it. To be productive in everything in our lives. We need it to be productive in everything in our lives. It's a gift that we give to ourselves and a gift that we give to others. That when I'm rested, I'm my best self. When I'm rested, I can be my best self at home, at work, with my family. I'm not, I'm not irritated and agitated all the time, walking around with an attitude. And sometimes a nap will fix your attitude. You will, you, you can, you will go to bed a monster and wake up a saint. Just for having some rest. If you don't make time for it, it ain't gonna happen. And even in you creating your strategic rest plan, everybody does, everybody don't need an explanation of why you're doing it. Some do, everybody don't. But you make it happen. Because if you don't make it happen, it ain't going to happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy, for your kindness. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus, just in this time, God, these words that you have given me to share with your people, I pray now in the name of Jesus that the word has not fallen on deaf ears. God, I pray, I pray, Father God, that we don't become so, uh, 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 that, 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 that we don't chase after the super that we miss the natural. 
that it's the, it's the small things that you desire for us to grasp and to be able to, uh, to, to be able to work in our lives. And rest is one of those things. Help us to normalize rest, Father, so that we can be our best selves for ourselves, for our families, and for the kingdom of God. Even those that are in my voice right now, God, that are tired, I pray that you will give them a rest. I pray that you will convict their hearts, God. I pray that you will help them to put the plan together so that they can be able to have rest. I pray that they won't make any excuses, but they will make only adjustments. So in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say, amen.